And you mind turning off the... So, uh, common errors are at the top limits. If you see R, that's for rounding. R, E is rounding early, like when you're supposed to actually do four decimals and you're using two. Um, there's uh, U for units. There's N for notation. And there's K for missing keystrokes. So, so let's say you lost two half marks, right? Two half marks, one out of 24. Oops. That's almost 4%, right? Oh, actually, almost like 4 point something percent, right? Just two, two half marks. If you lost four half marks, double that, right? You're losing almost 8% right there. So those, I would say, are no longer, like you shouldn't uh, make those mistakes very often. I was forgiving at times. So let's say you're the third time you're forgetting your keystrokes, right? I, I didn't, I would have marked it as a K, but if you add it up, you would notice that it still wasn't counted as your, in, in terms of subtracting, okay? Okay, so based on this polynomial, it's a cubic leading coefficient is negative. We know a bunch of stuff, this is my y-intercept. But, so with the, the key here was to, hey, would you be able to tell me this without graphing? And so one, two, or three are possible, but maximum is three. Y-intercept is like this. Um, how many bends will it have? Zero or two are possible, <clears throat> but I know that the curve will have two bends since there is an X term. That's the key there. If it has an X or an X squared term, it will have two bends. And I, I use decimals to show you that. I don't know if you remember, but if you have an X or an X squared follow the cubic, it will have two terms. So X or X squared term will do the trick, right? So I wanted to see that explanation. Hey, have a mark, right, for to see if, if some of you were awake during that time. Uh, and I don't blame you if you don't, right? It was a short. But anyways, qu quadrant two to four for this one, we know that it goes like, I don't want to have red all over the place here, but uh, it goes like this, right? So quadrant two to quadrant four. No more to be said there. Next. This is definitely a parabola, right? Because this arrowhead indicates that it's going to keep going this way. So it's a quadratic degree is two positive leading coefficient because it's pointing up. The range is one of these two because the range, I kind of estimate that it's about three here, right? So the y values have to be greater than or equal to three uh, or three to infinity. So that was worth a full mark for you to get that right. And then this one, obviously here you need to kind of create your scatter plot. And uh, some of you even made note, right, that it goes like this. It's, it's, quite, oops, it's quite linear, actually, if you look at it carefully. Uh, I'll promise you this. If it is supposed to be quadratic or cubic, it will be very obvious. It will not just be like, eh, there's one point that's a little off here. Could it be a cubic? No, it, like it'll be very obvious, right? It'll make that that bend or something like that. Okay. So you lost the marks there if you didn't say linear. But then I did. I look at me. Look at I. I went with linear, cubic, and quadratic. I had all regressions done here just in case you got this one wrong. So you still get the marks here. But this is really what I'm after. Lin reg. And you know what, uh, for, for keystrokes, if, if you give me at least something like this, I'd be fine, right? Really, I would do calc, right? Linear re regression. And uh, so this is really the answer I'm after. And if you use cubic or quadratic, you have to be very careful with your decimals here, right? Because it gave it to you in, uh, in the exponential form, right? Or the scientific notation, sorry. And that's another indication that maybe that's not the right one. Okay, it's trying, the calculator will try really hard to make it fit, but there's always the line of best fit. Okay. Okay. 
and then uh, for C, uh, 10 days is e the equivalent of 240 hours, guys. Remember, it's time and hours, mass and grams. That's what this function is relating. So you can't just plug in 10. So you lost half a mark if you missed that. But if you, if I saw you going second trace value, x is equal to 10, you got at least half a mark there because you you know what's supposed to be done. And so make sure you always add your units. Don't just leave the point. Don't just leave it like that, right? Just put the units in there and then I know we're good. And I also did the math for quadratic regression here on the side. Okay, so that one was worth seven marks. Flip over. Um, so if you enter this equation and you set your window, this window wasn't too hard to find actually, right? It's decent. Um, that's your x-intercept. That's when it's hitting the ground. So way to go. A lot of you got that one right. And then the time, it stays at or above uh, 2.5 feet, right? Um, you draw your line 2.5 here, and there's three instances where it cuts through. So really, there should be three times that you collect. And it's, right, you go from 0 to 1.43, Right? Plus, you're going to find, you're going to add the difference between the next two instances. Because if you subtract these two, you get the time you spent above here. So some of you missed that uh, adding part, but it's 10.24 seconds nonetheless. So we'll make note of that. Um, I'm going to copy someone's, uh, really, if, you, if you're dealing with a cubic and you want time above, you would go time one plus time three minus time two. Okay, like that's basically, that, that will give you the time above. You need to make very clear, right, time above. If you want to add that to your study sheet, I don't know if uh, that's probably a good one to have. It comes back actually later in the sinusoidal when we do sine waves. This, this will come back. And then domain is uh, 0 to x-intercept. Whatever you had up here, I honor your work if you use this number in here. right? So I would actually say, that's why I say step check, and I'll make reference to A. So th that's your x values. Make sure you put a D and an R there so I know which one is your domain and which one is your range, because that's also important. Um, and notice that the max, I did a little check here. The max is 3.81, so you might be tempted to say that's the highest y value, but when you look at the y-intercept, it's actually higher. So this is what the uh, y values go up to. So be careful there. The graphs, you know what? I really like the way you graphed. Even if you got it wrong up there, I, I honored how you did everything else. So you had everything labeled, you had your equation, you had the points where they belong, for the most part, right? Some of you might have uh, gotten some things wrong, but overall, I must say your graphing skills are excellent. So keep that up. Then this one, uh, the table was filled in, no problem for the most part. Some of you just need to watch out when you multiply. Uh, make sure your keystrokes are there. And don't argue with me. If it says quadratic, quadratic. If it's cubic, it's cubic, right? Don't argue with the question. It's only if it says what, what uh, function would best model, that's when you have to do your scatter plot and figure it out. But if it says quadratic, that's what you go with, right? Which is most of the time it tells you which one to use. Every once in a while we want to check is we want to see if you actually understand what's happening, okay? So that's your quadratic. Most of you got that right. Some of you forgot the x here. And in general, you want to forget about the x, right? About your x. But in this case, don't forget the x, okay? Not funny. Anyways, uh, the price here is three, 354. So you find the maximum point, right? The, the coordinates of the vertex. There is your the price per package that will yield a maximum revenue of this, right? So it did say and the revenue amount here. 
lowest price there are two instances where you can make 1500 bucks but the lowest price is 220 per package four marks this is like copy paste this is grade 11 applied at its finest right so some of you just need to review that and here again we're making a box and it's volumes right we're talking volumes volume so that's definitely cubic but it tells you that anyways right determine the cubic equation that will best fit and uh, you keystrokes and this is the equation some of you got uh, thrown off by this and that's really just zero however if you actually went plus one times 10 to the negative 12. If you actually write it in scientific notation, I'm fine with it, but you should know that that's zero. As soon as you have exponent negative, then it's zero for us. Um, based on the equation, what is the height that gives a maximum volume? Right, so you find the max, and here is a little bit of, uh, I need to give you a heads up here. And if you watched yesterday's video that I posted, when you do a cubic, it will do this, right? It will do this. And I'll tell you that this is as far as the domain goes. This is kind of like if you watch Lord of the Rings, right? You shall not pass, right? Like, so this is, this is it, right? So we do, we do not include this it, when you do a cubic regarding volume. We only look at this little hump here, right? Uh, and past that, uh, it, it wouldn't work, okay? So you need to know that this is outside domain. And because I didn't talk about this before the quiz, I didn't take marks off for the next part that's coming. But anyways, the max shouldn't, like you should have found that. And so that height will give you a volume. And remember, get your units right. Just look at the question, guys. Just go up here. It's like, what is X and what is Y again? Right? X is height and Y is volume. Right? I will never trick you. I'll never flip that on you. You can know that the first row is X, the second row is Y. Same with columns. If I give you this in columns, first column is X, second column is Y. Based on this equation, what heights would give you a volume of 20? Right, so they give you the y value, you find the intersections, and there are two heights, heights of 6.98 centimeters or 15.22. What was the other one, 60 something? Some of you found that third height. I, I just said this is outside of the domain, but I didn't take marks off there. So still, uh, you knew what you needed to do there. Sketch this one. Please make sure you have arrowheads at the very least, right? And uh, here's another kicker, guys. If you draw me a diagram that gives me an indication, so let's say you're doing this, and you're doing something like this, that would not be acceptable, right? Like, you should clearly show me that this is actually going further away from where you started, right? So this would be a mistake. Anything that kind of curves in, not acceptable, right? So you don't just... Don't just give me one of these, right? Like a signature, like actually make it look as, as decent as possible, right? Um, same with a parabola. This is a classic, like if the parabola at all does this, like if it actually gives us an indication that it's coming back in, we need to take marks off, right? So there's some things that we do look for, right? That it needs to open up indefinitely. It shouldn't even be a U right? U where it goes straight up, it shouldn't be that. It should give you an indication that it's opening up indefinitely, okay? All right, way to go, guys. Uh, and some of you learned and wrote down, and uh, now you know, okay? Keystrokes, all that. Uh, tomorrow's test, hopefully I don't see any of the keystrokes missing. And uh, you might say that's annoying. You know what the alternative is? Uh, doing it the pre-cal way where you have to do it all algebraically, right? Like, it takes a lot longer. A lot of the things you couldn't do in pre-cal that we do, right? But um, just keep that up.